Hey, it's Chris. Got a couple new home pods that I ordered. Gonna do a review, but first, I had to hit some of these bad reviews that I've been seeing that almost make it seem like you'd have to be out of your mind to order a new home pod. I hit a bunch of these sort of wacky home pod takes and first impressions in my first video, which was like a week and a half ago or something like that. And I don't want to rehash all those here, but you know, like people saying Siri is too stupid. 99% of what this speaker is designed for is listening to music and having it sound good. So the 1% where you can ask it to control your smart home stuff, that's not good enough. It also has to be chat GPT. You know, that's not my sort of complaint. I'm interested in the thing for what it is. See. A lot of people still complaining about the price still and it's like newsflash premium product from a company known for making premium expensive products that lots of people buy is not cheap but that's not really the main consideration here if you want a cheaper speaker then you get the home pod mini and for some people that's too expensive this isn't the speaker for everybody in the world but what i really want to dive into in this particular video is what some of the reviews are saying about the home pod like here's a blurb from what hi-fi importantly there are upgrades and the new home pod is smarter and even more flexible in terms of placement than before it also crucially sounds even better tighter more solid and better organized both spatially and rhythmically it's altogether more engaging exciting and enjoyable to listen to it's still not a sensible choice unless you're already an avid Apple user and preferably an Apple Music subscriber. If you are though, then the HomePod 2 is arguably the best speaker of this type you can buy. <laughs> well, that unless there <laughs> is the whole thing, right? I don't understand what they're trying to say. Like, yeah, this is for people in the Apple ecosystem who like Apple products, who might wanna use Apple services with an Apple speaker like Apple Music. What do you mean by unless? Like, it's not very good. Unless you're part of the target audience, then it's really awesome. Here's another one from Tech Radar. Let's dig into this. As it is, its value is a bit all or nothing. It's either a great buy for all in Apple users or a poor buy for everyone else. So the score we've given it here is only for those who should actually consider buying it. It's a great value, but it'd be even better with some extra options. What? You mean it's, it's made for Apple users? and they might actually like it, but if you're not an Apple user, you may not actually like it. Who did they think was shopping for this thing? Honestly, like PC gamers, <laughs> Kindle users, Samsung fans. I could see the Samsung people looking for a speaker because the Bixby speaker that was promised a long time ago never actually turned in anything, so. What is this bit about it would be even better with more options? You know, like the Spotify thing, if you dig into that thing, maybe that's more on Spotify than Apple. Depends on your framing of the whole thing, right? But what other options are people really looking to have added here? Because I'll tell you this, every time you add a hardware feature, that's gonna cost extra. And people have already been complaining for a long time, oh, the big HomePod, it's too expensive. So you can't have it both ways, like add all these features, but it's already too expensive. Well, what is it? They took out some of the mics, you know, took out some of the tweeters, made it a little cheaper to make, make it a little bit more attainable for people, and people are still complaining. Doesn't do enough. And by the way, I'm not sitting here saying, oh, it's perfect as is. There's nothing on the planet that can't be improved in some way. But uh, let's continue. Here's what TechCrunch has to say. I have quibbles. Apple Music has its shortcomings. Wi-Fi 4 is ancient, and the lack of backward stereo compatibility with the first gen sticks out like a sore thumb. But the HomePod 2 works well, looks nice, and sounds great. It's going to fit perfectly for a select cross-section of consumers. It continues to not be for everyone, and there's part of me that strongly suspects that Apple wouldn't have it any other way. I guess I have quibbles with the quibbles. Let's start with Wi-Fi 4. Thinking back, when I got my stereo pair set up and I started to play some music because I was gonna test it, I remember thinking to myself, you know, it sounds good, but there's just a mental taint there because I know it's not Wi-Fi 6, it's just tainted, it's dripping with Wi-Fi 4. Oh wait, that didn't happen because I didn't care and I just heard it and I thought, this is exactly what I wanted and it sounds amazing. People buying Apple stuff just want it to work. Some people like to get in dig under the hood and kind of do their own thing, make upgrades. And then there's other people who are just like, I just wanna be hands off and I want it to look good and be excellent at what it's designed to do. And I don't really care about all the details. Wi-Fi 4, Wi-Fi 6, your average person is just not gonna care. Now, the backwards stereo incompatibility, you can't stereo pair a brand new HomePod 
with an old HomePod. I don't even know why that's a thing or not. I haven't dug into it, but I also just haven't cared. You know, I was still using the old original HomePod. It was living in the living room and it was in daily use. We were using it, loving it. It was great. And then we got the new stereo pair. I've got it in the office right now. But when I get new stuff and it doesn't work with the old stuff, sometimes I just move the old stuff if it's still working. And Apple stuff works for a really long time. And I use it somewhere else. And it's not the end of the world. Everybody is different, but it's not a deal killer for me because I wasn't in it to just try to save the most money. And that's something that happens a lot in the Apple ecosystem. You got people who are like, it's not budget enough, but not every Apple user is only after just saving money they're after excellence. Like this last sentence, it continues to not be for everyone. Oh, come on. I have a feeling that this kind of reviewer wants the government to step in and sort of force Apple to turn the iPhone ecosystem into something that looks more like the Android side of things. We can do all kinds of side loading and stuff. Look, you already have options. You know, you don't have to use Apple's iPhone or this HomePod. Apple's not forcing anybody to do any kind of purchasing, right? If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. You just go do something else. Here's the Wall Street Journal. While the larger HomePod is nice, especially if you want fantastic room filling sound, the two Siri powered devices now offer essentially the same smart features. Talking about the big and the small. The new 299 HomePod on shelves Friday has built in temperature and humidity sensors, plus support for smart home technologies, including the low powered networking protocol thread. And so does the HomePod mini. Apple unlocked the same sensors in the existing $99 HomePod mini in a recent software update. So Wall Street Journal almost seems to be mad for a totally opposite reason of the previous review chunk that we just looked at because they're saying these things aren't different enough. We need more separation and segregation between the features of the more expensive and the least expensive. Essentially, now we're mad because Apple enabled some great features on the cheaper HomePod. <laughs> it's like, seriously, it's like a no-win situation, except it's not because Apple's doing really well. And that's sort of the nail in the coffin for all these arguments against Apple's products. Here's my big thing here with this. Like, why can't somebody just be allowed to enjoy the product that they want to enjoy? It's one thing if the HomePod was more bad than good, but you can tell by all these reviews, it's actually really lauded. They like what it was designed to do. It does its job really well. The problem is there's all kinds of people with opinions on what it should be. And that's the great thing about a free market. If you don't like it, there's other options. For instance, one of the reviews has the opinion that Apple played it too safe. Well, what I really prefer is if they just said, you know, in my opinion, Apple played it too safe and I prefer what is coming down the pipeline with Sonos or what's already available with Google or Amazon. Like just say that, but that opinion also has no bearing on whether or not I should check out the new HomePod. So like usual, I'm finding the mainstream reviews to be kind of comical, but I do have two of these set up as a stereo pair in the office and I've been enjoying them. Spoiler alert, they've been bringing a lot of joy into the office, into my ears. That first impressions video will be coming out soon. I gotta let you know, I've been working on a productivity course if you're new around here. It's a big thing, like it's taking me longer than I thought it would, but that's because I'm packing it full of so much useful information. So it's still coming, you can still get signed up to get pinged by email using the form down below, no spam. Also. I'm working on something new. It's a side hustle, side hustle. I'm really psyched to help people start their own side hustle. It's been life altering for me to be able to do my own side hustles and one turned into my actual full-time thing, but others continue to just make me more money and improve the quality of my life. And I wanna share how you can do that too. So I've got another form down there if you wanna get signed up for when that side hustle project launches, and that's gonna be sooner than the course. And the final thing is, don't miss out on the newsletter. A lot of people don't know about this from Daily Tech. Every Friday, we send out a newsletter that puts on autopilot the discovery of awesome apps and accessories for your Apple life. So check all that stuff out, and I'll catch you in the next video. Later.